Because let's be honest, when I when I first started, I didn't have a lot of money. You know, I didn't come from riches. I didn't come from you know wealth. You know, one half of my family had money, but it was my father's side, and I had I had no access to that. You know, it was a, a grandfather that wasn't biologically mine. My, it wasn't my father's father, so he wasn't entitled to anything. In fact, nobody got anything from him. You know, when they died, you know, everything went into uh, their children, his biological children. So I didn't have any advantages in that regard. So when I had losing positions, or if I had a loss of any kind, they were monumental. Like they did major psychological damage to me. But because I'm obsessively compulsive and I have a lot of other issues in my hard wiring that doesn't make me the perfect person. It would cause me to do things to be more aggressive about trying to get it back faster and inspire me to never quit. Sometimes I would be beaten down and my account would be dusted and, and blown. Like seriously, like there, that was very hard for me to save up money to get that account started again. And then in the matter of two days, maybe three days of doing you know, full of shit, chasing you know, the grain markets, trying to think that just because the market was showing me a reversal of the normal carrying charge market where I teach and the nearby contract should be cheaper than the next one out and going further. Well, every time I saw that inversion, because I learned this from Larry Williams and because I watched it in a video, I thought I understood it. Okay. And I looked and saw the commercials were above the zero line on the net trader position chart. So naturally, what does that mean? Every time that the Williams percent R was in oversold condition, that was when you buy it. That's what I was thinking. That was all I had to do. And I would be buying it, expecting it to go into limit up moves. And it would keep going down and stay oversold on the Williams percent R and keep going down and keep going down. And I'd buy more and it would keep going down. And then I would trade now without a stop loss because, you know, I know I'm right. I just don't want to get stopped out. And it just keeps going down. And all of a sudden the account's gone. I did that shit when I was younger. Okay. I did all that dumb shit because I didn't know how to trade. I didn't know how the market's book. I didn't know what the market is going to do. After those conditions present themselves, you still have to get in there and wait for structure to change to support that bullish idea. See, I didn't know any of that stuff. I just figured, well, the indicator says this, the market's showing that we're in a commercial bull market based on what Larry Williams taught, and I got money in my account, so fuck it, it's casino time. And <laughs> I was looking at an account statement saying zero or just a couple dollars in the account. And it would suck. Like it would suck because I was thinking to myself, you know, I know I can do this. It's just, I got to find a way to get in alignment with the market. I got to find a way. How does the market give me clues, indications that this is in fact the time to be doing something? And you know, I watched that video I put up yesterday that was like two minutes something. And I had people commenting to me on trading view and in the, in the YouTube comment section. I wish I could see the, the video, you know, at a slower pace. And I had a lot of, you know, robots and bots and sock puppeting from my favorite fan in Texas uh, saying it was serious. But, you know, it's like this, folks. Trading view follows me on, on Twitter which I'm honored. Thank you so much. If you're listening, uh, bar chart follows me on Twitter too. Thank you. Good. Thank you guys. I appreciate that as well. Uh, both of those services, I actually use them. Uh, I feel that they're great. They're not paying me. It's not a commercial for them, but if I was doing something in trading view that isn't available to everyone else, and if it wasn't real time, I would expect trading view to step forward and say, in a circle trader, that isn't a live thing. In fact, I might even invite them after this in a tweet to, hey, is this what real time looks like on your platform? Because there's people that say that that's market replay and you can't do, as far as I can see, I have not been able to find any way to do a trade when you're looking at market replay. And market replay screen looks different once you once you engage, it's different. But putting all that aside, I, I know that when you as a student see me do those trades and you think wow 
man, if I could just get like that, okay, then life's going to change for me. Well, I'm, I'm going to explain something to you. When I first started, I didn't think what I'm able to do now was even possible. I'm going to say that one more time. And it's not bragging. I want you to really listen to what I'm saying here. When I first started, even when I figured out what it is that I wanted to focus in on, I did not believe that I would be able to do what you're able to see me do now. It took a lot of time to get to this point. And when you see people like a Michael Jordan or Tiger Woods, which are real goats, okay? These men are, they're, they're the epitome. They're, that's the upper echelon. Like you can't get better than them. That's it. That's that, that they are it. They didn't get to that skill level right from John Street. They didn't just walk out there and say, yeah, you know, I'm going to do this and that. I'm going to be this great at it. I, I wasn't like that. Like I failed a lot. I blew lots of accounts. I tried changing stuff around. I tried taking things out of what I felt was working. Maybe that would make a, a, an example of improvement that would be notable. And like I said, I figured it out like two and a half, three years into it. I knew what I had, but I was tinkering around with it. Wasted you know, three more years of bullshit, you know, back testing and, and theory testing and putting money in accounts. And, and I would run money up and then crash and burn, run money up and crash and burn because I'm trying to figure out the optimal settings for everything. And I'm also doing things automated with easy language. Trade station. You know, all these things you know, these, these cuts, you know, death by a thousand cuts. Well, those thousand cuts didn't kill me. They make me a fucking animal today. Okay. I have scar tissue so thick. It's like bulletproof and wrecking ball proof too, bitch. Okay. I can literally walk into any setting, any venue, whether it be in front of the CFTC, SEC, FTA, courts, public opinion, whatever the fuck you want to bring, I can prove this stuff. And I would gladly do it. I would gladly do it. I would go on CNBC and do that shit live in front of everybody. Give me the opportunity. My ass will be in a car driving up the road and you'll see me on there with a t-shirt. Alcoholic. Think I won't? Test me. See, I won't do it. <laughs> They'll be hiring me. There's our new anchor, ICT on CNBC. Join us every morning in ICTs. <laughs> anyway, I'm just fucking with you. But I would do it. I am not lying. I'm telling you, give me an opportunity. I will make a show of it openly. Just to thumb my nose at all the doubters. I would love it. And win new friends.